How's it going guys? I'm back. I'm making this video to show you how some cops will backtrack in their police report. Now, in this case, like in every other case, all cops have recording capabilities on them 24-7 while on duty. So if there's one cop that's on the scene and there's no audio or video in the criminal case nine times out of ten the cop is lying if there's more than one cop and there's still no video or audio in that criminal case ten times out of ten those cops are lying that's just from my experience and so far I've been right like in this case there was more than one cop but they only show that one cop was there and what happened well what really happened was this guy is driving he gets stopped he then gets questions asked and one of them is can I search your car he says no you can't search my car unless you have a warrant the cop says okay fine cop starts asking other questions. He eventually says to the guy, you know what, get out of the car, puts handcuffs on the guy, says sit on the curb. Starts to search the car anyways. Now the guy is pissed and he's like, you can't search my car, why are you searching my car? And, you know, I, I don't give you consent to search my car. The cop's like, okay, still searching the car, doesn't care. Over an hour later, finds marijuana in the car and asks the guy, hey, can you take this test? I want you to take a field sobriety test so I can see if you're under the influence. Well, the guy's pissed. He's like, you know what? I'm not going to take any test. I'm not going to cooperate. I'm not going to say anything. And that was it. So the cop gets pissed. And says, well, then I'm going to charge you with a crime. Interfering and delaying me from doing my duties. You're not allowing me to do my duties in this criminal investigation, so I'm going to charge you with a crime. The guy doesn't even give a damn, so he's like, whatever. So the cop takes him to jail for something else, basically. Now, this cop backtracked in his police report and even omitted stuff on purpose, of course. And you'll see what he says versus what I just told you. <clears throat> and the interesting part is, I don't know if this officer did the police report while in the car, maybe on the way over there while somebody else was driving. I don't know, but I don't think he did this police report all at the end. Because if he did, it was pretty stupid of him to do this the way he did. You'll see why in a minute. So he goes on to say, he said he was on his way to a restaurant. He had difficulty remaining focused and at times it appeared he did not understand my questions. He appeared relaxed and his muscle tone was flaccid. Based on my training and experience, when you see that folks, BS is sure to follow. And the objective symptoms of being under the influence of marijuana, relaxed, droopy eyelids, short attention span and laughing, along with the strong odor of marijuana coming from his person. Now keep that in mind. This guy had made the assumption that this guy was high. So he threw that in his police report. There was a strong odor of marijuana coming off of this guy, allegedly. I believed he was under the influence of marijuana while driving a motor vehicle. Therefore, I informed him I believed he was driving under the influence and requested his cooperation in order for me to conduct an influence investigation report. I attempted to begin my DUI investigation several times, but he refused to cooperate. He became very argumentative and at times did not make any sense. He was upset and continued to refuse cooperation at all. He was seated on the curb and refused to stand up so I could check his eyes. So I guess being seated on the curb um, is not helpful because that means he's not doing that test. So he tried to trick him into doing the test by standing up. I explained to him again that I needed to conduct an investigation in order to find out if he was impaired to drive. I explained to him that without conducting a proper investigation, 
I could not tell if he was suffering from a medical emergency, if he was DUI and impaired to drive a motor vehicle, or if he was simply being uncooperative. Boo hoo hoo. I again asked him to stand up so I could examine his eyes for nystagmus. He said, I am not going to do anything. This is illegal. I will not comply with anything. Now, he is leaving the part that he illegally basically searched this guy's car. That's why he said, I am not going to do anything. This is illegal. But taken out of context, this guy sounds like he's just being belligerent because, of course, the cop is the one writing this police report. So crooked. He refused to comply with any of my commands, he refused to answer any of my questions, he refused to perform any field sobriety exercises, and he decided to no longer speak with me. Boo hoo hoo. I explained to him that he was delaying and interfering with my investigation of violation of PC 148A1. Can you believe that, folks? It's a crime to plead the fifth and not want to incriminate yourself. This cop is insane. Well, Thank God he's going to get retrained because that's what's going to be asked for in federal court. I once more asked him to stand up so I could continue my investigation to determine if he was in fact impaired to drive a motor vehicle. He refused to answer my question. I believed he was interfering and delaying my DUI investigation, a violation of PC 148A1. Therefore, I arrested him for the above listed violation. I handcuffed him and took him to the police station. Okay, so now he's taking this guy to jail for refusing to incriminate himself essentially okay but this guy is misapplying PC 14881 and I'm sure he's done it in the past that's why he was so ignorant enough to put this in a police report how stupid could you be apparently really stupid so this is where the guy backtracked and said he smelled a strong odor of marijuana and all this other stuff and I'm assuming this guy this officer, when I say this guy, this officer did this police report prior to getting to the police station because I don't think he was that stupid to do it after the fact, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe he was. But then he puts right here, because the guy had cooled down by then and was like, well, the cop was like, well, if you have nothing to hide and you're innocent, why don't you just take a blood test or why don't you just, you know, do this little test here? Uh, the guy was like, you know what? Yeah, fine. As a matter of fact, I want you to take my blood test because I'm going to prove that I'm innocent. And I'll take your stupid test right now. Now, you know, he said that because that point he wasn't really that upset, but still upset to the point where he said, I want you to take a blood test. The cop then says, no, 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 we're not going to do the blood, the blood test yet. First, we're going to do this, the stagmus test. Because the cop knows if he takes that blood test and it comes out that he's not high, there's a lawsuit. I mean, there's a lawsuit now. Either way, it's going to be coming, but it's more facts used against the officer that he needs to obviously be retrained. So the officer said, no, 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 he's not that stupid. So he goes, we're going to do this nystagmus test first. So then this is what happens. While at the station, he allowed me to check his eyes for horizontal and vertical gaze nystagmus, which were not present. Oops. I spoke with him for approximately 20 minutes and noticed he became more coherent and lucid. Of course. He denied drinking any alcohol, but he admitted he only smoked his medical marijuana earlier this morning. That didn't happen, by the way. But, see, he put that there so it can look like maybe that's why he made the mistake of thinking he was high, because maybe he was coming down. So that's kind of why he did that, you know. After checking his eyes, talking to him for at least 20 minutes, and continuing to evaluate for being, evaluate him for being under the influence, I determined he was coherent, lucid, and not the UI. Oops. So now, this officer, so he, in his mind, won't get, um a free trip to federal court for false arrest and false imprisonment he charged him with PC 148A1 and he forwarded this to the DA the DA came back as a matter of fact and charged this guy with an alcohol related crime I will talk more about that in another video but for the sake of this video I just want you to understand this is how it works they will backtrack just like there was a guy where he was recording the cops in front of his house, went inside when he saw that they were looking at him, they knocked on his door, he didn't open the door, they kicked it in. They arrested him, took him to this police car, and searched the house. <laughs> well, all the way in the back of the house, there was a room, they found drugs there. So what do they do? They leave the drugs there, they come back out, they call 
and try to get an application, a warrant, to uh, search the house. And what happens? Oh, they get it. So once they get the application for the warrant, they go into the house, find the drugs because they knew it was there, and in the police report, they put that the guy had admitted there was drugs in the house. So how you go from recording cops to admitting you have drugs in your house is beyond me, but of course, there was no audio and no video. And when there's more than one cop, you know that they're lying. Something's wrong, folks. So keep that in mind. But questions like, officer, isn't it true that you smelled strong odor of marijuana on me? Yes. Officer, isn't it true that I was laughing? Yes. Officer, isn't it true that I was or it seemed confused? Yes. Officer, how long does marijuana usually last in your system? Do you know? Questions like that are going to be used on this officer because he backtracked and when an officer lies, he has to make a second lie to cover up that first lie. When cross-examined about that second lie, he has to create a third lie to cover the second lie, and so on and so forth. But when you're cross-examined by someone that I know, you're going to get caught. Because normally people don't know what kind of questions to ask, but thank God I do. And this officer... I believe he's not going to show at trial. I don't think he's going to show up. It, I mean, this is this is why I always say cops don't show up. Like, if I have a criminal case against me, they won't show up. If they do, even better. Because I can cross-examine the officer and use his answers against him in federal court. It's like a... I've said this before. It's like a deposition. Only prior to filing a federal lawsuit. And so, of course, they're going to say, I'm not going to show up. Screw that. And, oh, well, case is gone. Cop didn't show. Now there's no liability. So they think. I mean, unless a person does file a federal lawsuit. But most people don't. Which is why they get away with it. All they got to do is tell the cop, don't show up. Or at least not for this case. And then show up for the rest of the other cases. Like they've done with me. So, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Share this with your friends, family members. And if you're cops, uh, I would share this in the briefing room. Thanks for watching guys. Godspeed.